Okay. So, <coughs> last class we mentioned about the motion of the meta center. We called it the M curve, how the meta center moves along with the uh, healing. Now, there are um, note that in general we assume one thing in case of all this healing that is we assume that the displacement del is always remaining constant. This is an assumption that we make in the development of all our mathematics theories. The meaning of delta is rema del remaining constant is that when it tilts like this, whatever is going in is equal to whatever is coming out. Now, <coughs> when can this be violated? Let us take a look at a case when this concept can be violated. It will happen if Suppose the ship is like this, the half breadth is like the full breadth is like this, then now this is known as the deck, that is the region at the top, okay, that is known as the deck. Now, suppose the initially the water line is like this, and now suppose the ship heals like this, this much. Now it has healed so much that the deck has actually immersed, it is actually called. Um, uh, yeah, it is a case of deck edge immersion or the deck edge, not the whole deck of course, the deck edge is immersed. So, this is the deck edge, this region is now immersed in the water. Now, in this case, uh, we will see that um, the volume that has submerged is this and um, the volume that has emerged is this. Okay. Now, you will see that a little bit of volume here has been left. I will put it in the opposite direction. Right? A little bit of volume has been lost there. If the deck was up to this, then it is okay, we have no problem. But since the deck uh, ended before that, you have a slight problem that is this much volume is lost. There is a difference in volume between the side immersed and the the side immersed and the side emerged okay this is the side immersed and this is the side emerged more has emerged more volume has emerged whereas less volume has gone in because this volume is actually air or when it goes in it becomes water so this is not the ship so that much volume is lost so what do we have we have the volume immersed not equal to the volume submerged now this is what happens in actual practice it can happen in actual practice in some uh, some geometries of the hull, some types of hull where you have the depth is not too much. When the depth is not too much, such a thing can happen. Um, now, there are different ways of uh, at approaching such a problem. You have to obviously see some method of doing it. That is, in general, um, the problem is more complicated, but we try to reduce it to a simpler case by making some assumptions. Now, how can we make the volumes equal means the volume submerged and the volume emerged equal. Now, this can be done if now suppose I assume that it is healing about this not this point, but it is healing about some point here then it becomes like this. Okay. Now, what has happened we had this volume greater than this volume because of this this volume is now reduced a bit, it is only this much is, I mean I cannot dark, okay. this volume is out, okay. this volume is not emerged now, whereas there is, an, uh, this, there is a decrease in volume here. Now, this decrease in volume will imply and here the, see this intersection of this line and this line is here now, therefore this volume actually starts from here, okay. it opens out like means it opens out like this from that point. Therefore, we have an increase in volume on this side and a decrease in volume on this side and we can keep moving that point such that we will have volumes uh, emerged and volume submerged equal. Now, this is the mathematical method we use to um, make sure that the volume emerged is equal to volume submerged and so that the mathematics does not get too complicated. But in real practice, it does not have to be like that. The ship might heal about any, po ship might heal about any point and therefore, um, the problem is a little more difficult. Um, Later, when we come to the end of the course, later uh, we will 
specifically address this problem. Right now, I'll just I am just mentioning the problem as such and the method of solution. But we will do this in later in the last part of the course. Okay. Now, we have mentioned. I have already mentioned to you what we call as the statical stability curve or the curve of statical stability. <laughs> So, this goes up, comes down like this, okay. this time it is at 80 degrees in this figure and um, I have already told you that at an angle of 1 radians and you should know also that 1 radian is equal to 57.3 degrees, 57.3 degrees conversion from radians to uh, um, degrees. So, at around 57 degrees, 57.3 degrees, if you draw a line, a vertical and at that point somewhere here and here if I draw a tangent, if they, the point at which they intersect is this, this height will be equal to gm, okay. this much we derived in the last class. Um, so, this is alpha and we showed one method of showing that this vertical equals g m and it is the uh, vertical at an angle of 57.3 degrees which is equal to 1 radian. No, 57, yeah this is 1 radian I think. This is, okay. Then there is a slightly easier and similar way, a simpler way of deriving uh, last time we did using a differential form we differentiated by parts and we got a value that this vertical value was equal to gm. Now, uh, we can use another method. Now, suppose we have this figure. Now, let us take any angle okay, this, this time I will call it phi. Let us suppose we have any angle phi and I draw a vertical at means uh, I draw a vertical um, at some point where this angle I won't mention sorry this this is fine. Remember this statical stability curve is a graph between phi the heel angle and g z okay this is the statical stability curve it is a curve between the heel angle phi and the g z. Now at any phi it does not matter some we are to get a expression we are doing at any phi I draw a vertical. So, this height, these things I mention as A, I mark as A, B and C, D, E. So, um, now you can see that directly we can see that the triangle A, B, C and the triangle A, D, E are similar. that you can directly see in the figure. It is the same angles, it is uh, it's made from the same, um, all three angles are same. So, it is the say, uh, similar triangles. Therefore, D E divided by A E equals B C divided by A C. Now, I think, okay, I will keep this figure as well. Okay. Now, we have this. Therefore, D E divided by uh, what is AE? AE is 57.3 degrees or it is equal to 1 radian equals BC divided by BC is GZ at that particular value of theta. Is it clear? BC is the vertical. The vertical distance always represents GZ because that coordinate is GZ. So, this is GZ and this is phi. So, at any value, this represents the value of gz at this value of phi. Okay? This is the value of phi. So, phi is changing from 0 uh, to 57.3 to 80. Phi is changing like this and consequently, gz is changing from 0 to whatever is the value at okay? each, each thing is changing. Now, therefore, at the value of phi, you have a value gz. Therefore, the bc represents gz at the value of phi divided by phi divided by AC, AC is phi. 
let us call it in radians. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. B is on the line. B C, why should it represent G Z, right? Uh, oh, actually, okay, that is why it is uh, it's a good question. The, re the reason is according to the figure, uh, what they have written here is that B C is this is the beginning, okay. The, so, this uh, derivation is actually true when the separation between this curve and the line is not very much, okay. That is their explanation. So, B C is almost equal to G Z. So, it is not equal, that is correct, it is not equal to G Z. It B C, if it is on the line, it will be equal to um, slightly different than G Z. So, this is, the uh, this is their uh, assumption. So, this is equal to G Z by 5. Now, that is what this in a way it is not really correct, but uh, it says that phi is small and then in the next we are actually going from phi equal to um, 0 to in fact 57.3, we are extending it. There is a problem in this, but uh, this is what this book does. So, phi is small then um, therefore, d e d e divided by a is 1 radian is equal to g z, I write it as g m sin phi divided by phi. Again the concept comes phi is small, okay. if you assume that phi is small then sin phi is equal to phi, therefore sin phi and phi you can cancel out, therefore d e becomes equal to g m, alright. You see this derivation, this derivation is not very convincing actually uh, from the fact that you are assuming first phi to be small, then phi to be large means in the case when um, you are extending to the region g m, it is actually phi equal to 57.3, there you re really cannot assume phi is small and that sin phi is equal to phi, that derivation has a problem, but if you remember the previous derivation that is actually correct. So, it is it is just differential, uh, that was a correct definition derivation, so it is okay. This is a simpler way of deriving it, but you will get the expression that g m is equal uh, d e is equal to g m that is we are getting that d e is equal to g m. So, this is that derivation therefore, what we are saying is that at a point of um, 57.3 degrees if we draw a vertical and um, that and if you take a distance g m you measure a distance g m there from g m if you draw a line connecting to the origin you will get the tangent to the curve at that uh, origin. Same thing which in a slightly simpler format it is done. done. Um, and uh, okay, now we come to a new concept that we call as uh, dynamic similarity. So, if the power goes there is no problem, there is no problem with this, okay. Okay, now uh, we come to the concept of dynamic similarity. Um, that is, uh, this is a, again about the uh, the concept of stability and when the ship becomes stable, neutrally stable, and uh, but it's approached in a different way. That we'll see what it is. That is. Um, Okay, that is first of all I assume there is a cross section like this. Okay, now this is G, this is B zero and now the ship heals by an angle phi 
and B0 this is gone in, gone to uh, some point here uh, I will call it here B1 and here I draw a vertical and same way. Okay, um, all right. Now draw a vertical here, and this is the meta center M. Um, now look at it this way. Here we have the weight delta acting at this. I'll just draw this figure, this line. Therefore, this is G, and this is B zero. Okay. So at G, I have a value of delta acting down, and at B B zero, I have a value of delta acting up. Okay, so the, these two weights are acting like the two forces are acting like this. Now, what happens? It has moved into a new point, into a new shape here. Now, suppose I do this with m as center. Okay, I draw, take this gm as the distance, and I draw an arc like this. So this will be the point of g. Okay, note that gm hasn't changed. G is not changed because the weights have not been removed or shifted, so G hasn't changed. Now, if you take this B0, means I am taking this B0M initially and I am moving this distance and I am drawing an arc in the same fashion as I drew this. Okay, this in the new new line, B0 will be here. Okay, and this is B1, actually the new position of your center of buoyancy. Is it clear between these what I have drawn here? All I have done is I have taken the distance B0 m and with m as the center I have drawn an arc with B0 m as the radius and B0 touching here. So, B0 will be here B1 is here. Now, what do we see? So, this here we have B0 here we have B1 and you here you have G. Now, let us suppose that the initial distance between G and B is D0 okay? and the this distance is therefore d0 this distance right now what has happened because of the healing the center of buoyancy has shifted to this point b1 in this book they have take they have written actually it's uh, they have taken it as co com, uh, bold d0 it's it looks it cannot i cannot do it this i'll call this d1 okay so um, this distance is d1 between g and the new position between g and the new position of b the distance is d1 now all right now what has happened a force delta which acted at b0 has now moved from uh, this position to this position it has moved by a distance of d0 mi d1 minus d0 okay um, yeah so d1 will be greater than d0 and d1 minus d0 a weight delta has moved right the weight delta has moved a distance d1 minus d0 what is the work done in moving this a force into work done in moving it is force into distance moved fx is the work done you know that work done is equal to f into the distance through which it moves f dx dw is equal to f dx okay this is the concept of work done therefore because of this movement in the distance between because of this movement in the center of buoyancy work equal to delta into d1 minus d0 has been performed right that means because of this healing it just that is a final conclusion because of the healing of the ship a work equal to delta into d0 minus d1 has been d1 minus d0 has been performed okay that much work is performed and that work the work done is known as dynamical stability so dynamical stability is equal to work done or it's the energy required you can say that it is the energy required to heal the ship okay it is the amount of work done so you can say that is the amount of energy required to heal the ship so that energy or the work done amount amount of work done is known as dynamical stability so dynamical stability and you can call it a dynamical stability arm that is not done so much it is but the thing is dynamical stability is a word used to represent the work done to heal the ship that is dynamical stability 
Now, um, now if this is clear, we will do little bit of uh, derivation. Now, suppose that the ship heals through an angle phi or theta, let us do, okay, phi itself is good. So, if the ship heals through an angle phi, it heals a little bit. Now, we assume one additional thing, it heals by a small additional amount further by d phi. Initially, it heals, it is healed at an angle phi and now it heals by an amount. So, this is the initial position. Actually, this can only be seen in figures in these. Uh, so, this. So, it is initially healed by an angle phi. This is the initial upright position. You have g here and um, you have b 0 here. Then, so note that we are doing like this. This is your position of b 0 in the new curve. This is your b 1. Then, this is g in the new curve. Now, it heals by an angle additional amount d phi. Now, because of the initial amount, this is d phi. Now, because of the initial amount of healing, that is by a healing of phi, um, there is a writing arm produced. The writing arm produced is defined as the, if you remember, I did in the last class, writing arm is defined as the vertical distance between g to the new line, new to the new line from the center of buoyancy, means from g to this uh, z g to this from g if I draw a vertical to this line that will give me z here and that g z is called the writing arm. Now, the question is how to draw the work. Okay, let me draw it like this. Let us suppose this is the vertical. Okay, this is 90 degrees. So, this is I call it g z theta okay, means or phi g z phi not theta g z phi means it is the g z when the angle of healing is phi. Is that fair till now clear? Um, I will complete and maybe explain further. So, this is gz, gz phi. Now, it has healed by a further, it has healed by a further amount of d phi. As a result of which, there is again a um, gz, new gz produced means or rather the g z value will change because of this new healing by an angle d, uh, d phi. Now, there will be a new g z, the position of the new g z, how will you get? By drawing a vertical from here to this line. Okay. Now, it will come like this, something like this. Okay. This is 90 degrees, you draw a vertical from here to here. So, this is g, this will give you g z phi plus d phi. Phi plus d phi is a subscript it's not a value or anything so g gz when the phi when the heel is phi plus d phi that is gz of phi plus d phi the other one is gz of phi so you get two gz's gz at phi and you get a gz at phi plus d phi okay now let me draw this part alone so you have g and you have uh, you will have z theta uh, z phi and you will have um, this will be z I will explain this again if it is confusing phi plus d phi. So, okay, I am just drawing this figure part this g z line is just g z this g z plus phi, I am drawing it here, it will be like this. Now, note that here you have phi, if this is the point, here you have a phi and here you have a phi plus d phi. So, two lines like this. Now, the, if you see that, if you see the geometry, you will see that this angle becomes d phi, because it will be like this. Actually, this is not parallel to this one, it will be like this. Okay. Okay. Now, if this is d phi, the figure is not correct, that is why you are not able to see it, but if this angle is, if if this is phi and that is d phi, this angle will be equal to d phi, just do it, because these angles are 90 degrees, it is not very difficult to derive this. Okay. 
Now, if that is true, what is this distance? The vertical distance between this point and this point, which is your d1 minus d0. The vertical, that is the difference between, um, note one more thing, this represents a vertical line. Means, when a ship is there and healed, what do we do? We draw a water line through this. That water line is horizontal. Okay, though the figure, the curve, it looks curve, it looks inclined. It's actually horizontal, like that. This line and the perpendicular to that water line, which is the line through the B, will always be a vertical line. So just like this, this is a vertical line. So this distance between this this point and this point, this distance will give you actually uh, d zero d one minus d zero. So d one minus d zero will give you this will be given by this value which will be now the uh, gz I think it is dz uh, tan th tan phi tan d phi okay which is equal to g which can be written as gz d phi okay um, this is actually d of this because this is a there is a d phi on this side it's d of on the other side also otherwise it doesn't make sense right do you under, i'll explain this again i can see everybody is confused so anyway then um, once you have this then you will have d1 minus d0 will be equal to integral of gz d phi i'm just using i'm just using this d of d1 minus d0 is equal to gz d phi so integral of d1 minus d0 is equal to d1 minus integral of d of d1 minus d0 is d1 minus d0 is equal to integral of gz d phi. So this is the expression that I want to derive. I will explain it again. So this is the what does this represent gz d phi integral gz d phi. It actually represents the area under the gz phi curve. Integral g what is gz phi curve again it is called the curve of statical stability. So the area under the statical stability curve is what you are calling as dynamical stability area up to a particular phi it is like this means if it is healed between 0 and phi you will get the area if you take the area from 0 to phi in that curve statical stability curve for that ship you will get the dynamical stability or the work done that is required in healing the ship from phi equal to 0 to that phi again I will repeat dynamical stability is the work done or it is the amount of energy to be expended to trim uh, to heal a ship from phi equal to phi 1 to a phi equal to phi 2 means tr if it has to heal through a small angle phi that healing is given by that amount of work done is given by dynamical stability that is the meaning of it and it is given by this d1 minus d0 okay and it is the area is you have seen it is equal to gz d phi now um, I mean the, this is d1 minus d0 is the dynamical stability arm and delta into d1 minus d0 will give you the dynamical stability. This is the real meaning of dynamic, this act, I mean this is, this is a meter right, Dynam d1 minus d0 is meter means it is a unit of uh, distance. So it is a dynamic uh, dynamical stability arm and um, delta into d1 minus d0 will give you the energy or work done, it is given by this is really what you mean by dynamical stability and therefore the area under the gz will give you the dynamical stability arm and um, so whenever you are talk, talking about dynamical stability note that someone asks you what is dynamical stability you can very simply say that it is the area under the gz curve gz phi curve or it is the area under the statical stability curve that is the meaning of dynamical stability. But what does it really represent? It represents the amount of energy required to heal the ship and it is equal to the area under the gz curve, it is equal to integral of gz d phi into delta of course. So delta into delta into area under the gz phi curve will give you the dynamical stability. Um, what is the advantage of dynamical stability? Now, you can see that we are now looking at stability from a slightly different point of view. Last time, previously what did we have? We had a healing moment which produced a ship to heal by, we in that initial de derivations, we did not really look at 
how the ship healed rather we were looking at the final he it is healed by some due to some reason and uniformly healed that is another thing we are assuming it uniformly healed and it came and rested there how it goes back to its initial position very uniform conditions now that is not how it is in real practice means in real practice what will happen is that for 10 minutes for instance very strong wind might blow a it's like an the word is impulse i think it means a sudden impulse is provided so um, it's not a uniform force acting it means it's not like uniformly going like this that concept doesn't hold really if it is if you assume that then all our work is okay but if there is a sudden wind blowing for a 10 minutes it blows very strongly then it stops after 10 minutes it blows again like that it's like impulsive it means it's like intermittent very strong forces acting not a uniform force but very strong forces acting in very short times therefore we cannot really study in a steady fashion the whole thing you have to the only way you can study it is by using the energy what you say is that the amount of energy provided by the wind is equal to the amount of energy going to heal the ship and from that you can find phi in this case that means that much of healing you can study you that much of healing is produced due to that wind that has come that is due to that uh, wind that acted for 10 minutes how much energy has come in that much energy has gone to heal the ship and from that you can get phi that much of healing is required the other study assumed a uniform force is acting so uniformly it's it's continuously uniform force is acting so it continuously moves like this it goes up to phi so we can calculate what is the phi produced due to a force and all that but since it's not true this dynamical stability becomes a much more um, powerful tool to study this uh, kind of the real cases that is why the concept of dynamical stability came now I'll, probably i'll just explain this again okay now okay i'll start from this thing again this i think is clear that is d1 minus d0 from this figure i think it's clear so delta into d1 minus d0 is your dynamical stability that is clear now once you have that suppose you have a ship in its uh, i'm just repeating it in its initial position like this now this is what i have represented by this line okay the initial position of the vertical and the water line is somewhere horizontal okay so this is g this is b0 now it is healed due to some factor by an angle phi so this is its new position note that this is also vertical from geometry you don't have to think of all that but in real practice it's a vertical because a horizontal water line is like this but let's forget that so this is phi it's healed through an angle phi so here you have i have already explained to you that what is known as a writing arm gz is a vertical that is drawn from g to this line to the new position of uh, b to the new position of b if you draw means to the new to the new line through b if you uh, draw a vertical and then the uh, that line hits there at z and that distance is called as gz so this is gz phi or it just means that when the healing is phi the z produced the z at that point is called z phi and that distance is gz phi okay now it is healed further by a small angle d phi this small angle d phi so it is healed further and it is here this is the new line okay now again note that this is also vertical we are talking only, so when you are measuring distance like this it's also vertical when you are measuring distance that is also vertical that is also vertical now similar to what it is at g like a gz you have gz phi you have already done you do a gz phi plus d phi same thing means what has happened at phi you do it continue you repeat it for phi plus d phi so here you have another g z phi plus d phi okay so i have drawn this line g z plus phi, d phi now if you just take that small part out this will look something like this there will be a g z phi like this g z d z plus uh, z phi plus d phi like this here so two of them and this angle will be d phi now this distance will be d0 minus d1 d0 what is d0 it is um again what is d0 this is b0 this is b1 okay now if okay that is a probably an assumption that but that is straight away means if this is uh, if this goes through as this means what is this distance is d0 it g comes here somewhere this distance is d0 it moves by a distance slightly more distance d1 minus d0 
z moves by a same distance z1 minus z uh, z d1 minus d0 again so this distance will give you d1 minus d0 this distance is equal to gz tan phi which can be written as gz d phi uh, dz tan phi which is dz phi okay basically gz phi let's remove the d phi and all that um, okay so you get uh, so from that you get this expression that d0 minus d1 is equal to integral of gz d phi which implies that um, d0, d1 minus d0 which is the um, delta into d1 minus d0 which is known as the dynamical stability is delta times the area under the gz curve and area under the gz curve is the dynamical stability arm and delta into gz under the uh, delta into area under the gz curve is the dynamical stability and that is known as the work done to move the ship heal the ship that is dynamical stability now okay now we'll just mention this is actually an important concept means uh, later uh, in the later part of the course you will see some rules which are usually the imo rules uh, international maritime organization um, so they have their own rules regarding how the i mean they have to they have specified a set of rules which tell you whether the ship is safe or not or the ship is um, and based on that rules there are some means every ship has to get a certificate from a i have already told you every ship before it is uh, put in practice has to get a certificate from a um, organization something like the lloyds register or like a, in india we have the indian register of shipping all these irs lloyds register or um, uh, american bureau of shipping all these different shipping agencies are there for different countries from them they have to get a certificate so the rule that the Com that organization like the indian Reg register of shipping looks at is made by the imo called the international maritime organization now one of the rules is like this it is not just the imo now there is a uh, something known as okay this is just for merchant ships merchant shipping it's called load line rules anyway there are different types of rules made by different uh, organized of course people do research in or universities only and other basins they uh, come up with the rules they modify the rules and these uh, organizations adopt those rules and they give the certificate so one of the some of the rules we look at which are very important um, one of them is that the area under the gz curve for any ship G area under the gz curve means gz curve is always with respect to phi okay the other coordinate is always phi so it is gz phi that is the statical st so we call that gz curve gz curve is always this curve of gz versus phi so that nobody mentions phi gz phi curve and thing it's called a gz curve so the area under the gz curve should be greater than okay it should be greater than um point not five five meter radians up to an angle of 30 degrees means if you take let's suppose this is your gz curve now if this is obviously about 57 degrees 57.3 degrees now if this is 30 degrees the area under this curve up to 30 degrees whatever be the ship whatever be the type of ship and anything this is fixed 30 degrees up to 30 degrees your area should be greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 0.055 uh, me, uh, meter radians i think you should just by heart these numbers there's nothing else to do here uh, so 0 0.055 meter radians up to an angle of 30 degrees then um, it should be greater than now 
the gz curve that is up to 30 degrees. Now, this is now it also says that this gz curve should be greater than or equal to 0 0.09 meter radians uh, up to 40 degrees or suppose that before that 40 degrees some opening is there means in the ship's hull there actually on the hull there is a water line most likely there is be no openings be below the water line okay it will be closed everywhere but above the water line in general um, after some height there will, there will be some openings here and there um, to do ballast sometimes to put the anchor sometimes different lot of such openings are there okay now if in fact even air holes might be there um, ventilation, different uh, kinds of things are there. If the ship heals beyond 30 degrees, so what this says is that the ship should be designed always such that when it heals up to 30 degrees, there should be no such hole that is going under the water. Every ship is designed like that. So up to an angle of heel of 30 degrees, no hole will go under. So that is fixed. After 30 degrees, there, there are some ships where holes can come. Now when that happens, um, up to that angle or if there is no hole up to 40 degrees, your a, uh, this area under the GZ curve should be 0.09 meter radians. That is the second rule. These two rules are to be very strongly followed. And in addition, now there should be between 30 and 40, this is the third rule, between the 30 and 40 radians, uh, degrees, between the 30 and 40 degrees, there should be at least 0.03 meter radians of area. Um, it, it does not have to be 40 degrees. If it is also a hole coming before that, that is up to that degree, there should be a 0.03 meter radians of area uh, in this GZ curve. So that is, these are three important rules. Um, So these are rules, so this is how rules are made in the basis of dynamical similarity. These three things relate to um, dynamical stability. These are rules associated with dynamical stability. And uh, there is a parallel set of rules regarding GZ also, that also you have to know. So this is one set of rules that should be followed strictly. So when they are, means they will measure the uh, area and uh, means they will draw the GZ curve. So it is important that for a uh, ship you should be able to draw the GZ curve. So once the ship is made and uh, it is given to that organization, they will draw the GZ curve and they will measure the areas and make sure this happens, this is satisfied. Now a couple of other form, uh, rules are also there that needs to be satisfied that is. Um, that um, uh, the GZ not less than sorry greater than or equal to note that we have the curve of GZ. So it comes like this. Now, let us suppose this is 30 degrees. So, whatever be the ship, it means that at 30 degrees, at an angle, this should at least be point, point 0.2 meters GZ. This is a, a strong criterion for the uh, stability, that is, GZ should be uh, greater than point 0.2 meter. Um, then and number 2 is we have already drawn the gz curve okay and we have seen that gz reach, reaches a maximum value and then starts decreasing now the another rule says that this maximum gz should never occur before 30 degrees okay for a ship so the GZ should always occur after 30 degrees for a ship, somewhere anything after 30 degrees is acceptable. So the value of maximum GZ should occur only after 30 degrees. Then uh, 
uh, then another rule is that we have already said that we have already derived that the condition for stability is that gm should be greater than or equal to what is it greater than or equal to? greater than 0 right that is the condition for uh, stability so uh, but in practice we don't say that gm greater than 0 is the criterion we say that gm should be at least 0.15 meter okay that much of clearance is given for different purposes of the ship so that gm transverse should be greater than at least point it should at least be equal to 0.15 meter so these are some rules that are to, so these are uh, rules related to uh, the dynamical stability related to gz and related to gm so three set of rules that are important so as i said you have to really by heart these numbers 0 0.2 and 0 0.15 uh, 0.03 and all that you have to remember yeah Um, actually, the exact other conditions. What if what will happen? It means that it will be unstable. Now, why should it be unstable? Is your question? Um, in practice, stability will increase now. That when GZ comes below before 30 degrees, that means the area under the curve is increasing. That means for more energy, it is having a lesser T. means more energy is having a lesser heel that makes sense but let me see um, which one is the gz maximum gz I need to think about this. I'll tell you. This a, that is a good question. Uh, GZ, but the rule says that. So obviously there is some other criterion that. Um, go, I'll tell you that. I have to. Phi LT will be smaller, uh, Which one? Phi LT. What is Phi LT? Huh? Oh, vanishing stability. Um, GZ becomes zero at that point. Okay. If that is if it goes here then gz might be that is less um, that could be a reason you see understand what he said now he says that if the sh curve shifts like this like this the curve the vanishing stability might happen at a smaller angle if it goes like this and crosses here the vanishing stability comes here right so that might be a reason that is a p good possibility but i have to really see what it is actually that seems a good reason i'll tell you um, Okay, then. So these are some rules, and from this you have. Um, now we can have there can be some uh, some ships designed. You will have um, end up with some different kind of curves like. What will happen if you have a GZ curve like this? Okay, this is a slightly different form. This is GZ versus phi. What it means is that, what does it mean if? Okay, that, let's see that. If the curve is going down, what does it mean? It means that GZ is negative, obviously, and that means writing arm is negative. What does it mean? Writing arm is negative. It's trying to heal it. Actually, it's trying to capsize. Not, it's not writing it. It's going the other way around. So at this point, any of these regions where GZ is negative. Okay, the ship is initially upright. Now, some small factor, let's say a wind came, it healed like this. Now, what will happen? The writing moment itself is going to cause it to heal. So, it will continue to heal and till it reaches here. At that point, when it reaches there, any more healing, the writing moment is positive after that. So, after that, it will tend to come back. Now, the ship will remain like this always. So, the ship will be going like this always. Okay, this the ship will be like this that is a end result of such a gz curve it's of course stable but it's a strange kind of step in that is it's unstable in the region before this from this region to this region it's unstable but beyond that it's stable so this is known as lol and that angle is called the angle of lol 
and the phenomenon itself is called. So, the if you are told that ship is law or ship is angle 10 degrees. So, the if you are told that the ship is lolling at an angle of 10 degrees, obviously you can draw your gz curve like this. This is the meaning of your gz curve. Okay. So, that means at an angle of 10 degrees only it seems to be stable. Beyond 10 degrees it will come back to its position because the gz curve is writing arm is positive, but before that the writing arm is negative. So, it causes it to heal, it causes it to move in this direction, causes it to remain at 10 degrees. So, this is an angle of heel, this represents a ship going like this. Again this is a common question for your viva and uh, interviews and all they ask this. They say uh, either the other way or this way means they will draw a gz curve like this, they will ask you what does this mean, what does this imply about the ship or you will you are asked if the ship is going like this, let us suppose that the ship is going with an angle of lol, draw the gz curve to okay, from there or from here two ways. At any case this you have to know, the if you understand why it is, so it is very easy to uh, remember. This is all there is to know, there is in this in this region in the from here onwards your gz is positive, that means your writing arm is positive, it means that anything causing it to tilt further the writing arm will be positive causing it to come back. So, there is no problem as far as this region is concerned, but here in this angle means when it is between 0 and 10 degrees between that angle of heel, if it heals by some factor let us say wind caused it to slightly heal, the writing arm will itself cause it to uh, cause it to uh, heal in the other direction and will cause like this and it will go till it is 10 degrees, beyond that the writing moment will try to bring it back, so the ship will remain at this. So, in general the ship will be going like this. Okay. So, if it heals more than the lol angle, it will come back to the lol angle. So, it will like be like this, if it is like this also it will be pushed back here, if it is like this also it will be pushed back here and finally, it will go like this most likely. I mean slight variation, it means a ship is like this, it never goes like this, it always goes like this. Okay, right? Means a ship will ever be upright in when it is, even if it is a good ship, it will never remain upright, it will always heal a little here and there. That is why we are doing all these calculations, but the other ship, this ship will be in this position it will heal like this. Okay, Means its general mean motion is like this, that is the meaning that is called lolling, that angle of loll it is called. So, there is a unstable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium between this angle of 0 and phi of loll the angle of lol and uh, therefore um, this is bit, bit, this is known as uh, so between phi equal to 0 and phi equal to the angle of lol uh, the ship will be in unstable equilibrium okay so i think i'll stop here thank you